Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try and fix up this inclinometer. It's a device that measures the angles of things. So it was sent in by a viewer called John and uh, as far as I know he uses it for work and basically then one day it just stopped working. When it turned on it had all the digits on the display and he couldn't get it any further than that so just got another one. Now a look online it looks like these are made for professional users so I know you can do a very similar thing with your f uh, phone app but I presume it's not going to be as accurate as something like this if for example you're measuring roads and various other different things looking online the example I seen was for example you know a mitre saw that you uh, cut through wood if you want a certain angle on that you can put it here zero it at that level and then stick it to the blade to get the level you want and then obviously set it to that level take it off and then do your cut so I presume it must be an extremely accurate way of doing it. So uh, yeah, I think John's had a quick look inside and he said he couldn't see anything obvious on it. So let's pop the battery in. And it just comes up with everything on the display there. Okay, all right, nothing's happening there. The buttons definitely do click in though. So let's take it apart. It doesn't seem to be any screws, but I can see here, looks to be slight little marks around here. So I think this is where it's come apart before. Let's get a pry tool. Now, while I'm doing this, let's give a shout out to the MyMate Vince Massive. This month that consists of Operational 117, KitDigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, the My Mate Vince Fan Club, Dorian from Hoover Lux Restorations, Doctor Restoration, Mr. Directory, Mediasteamer.com, and Jaw Emotive Garage. So massive thanks to all the massive. Massive thanks in the massive, <laughs> and a big thanks to all the other Patreons. Ah, do you know what? I wonder, is it stuck down underneath here? I wonder, is the little screws hidden under this little front bit? Yes, there is, okay. And at the bottom as well. All right, good job I didn't take that any further. We're in. Okay, so it looks like originally it was also set up for a reset there as well. ABS. So does ABS just mean the same as zero, possibly? It's got like a magnetic bottom here. Oh, wow. Oh, look at that. No, I wasn't expecting, I, mean, I didn't know what to expect, but I wasn't expecting that. Oh, I like that. So is that like a kind of potentiometer, but a free route wheeling one? So rather than, you know, like on a, a controller, you move this. You're moving, you're moving it round, aren't you, on the axes? Oh, that feels so nice. You're moving this round and then it's picking up like the resistance of where it is. Is this just done on a similar thing but just using a bigger a bigger weight? You know, off-centered weight. Oh, I like that a lot. Right, okay, now, so we've got a little header here that goes into here. There looks to be a little bit of a solder splash there. We'll zoom in and have a look at that in a minute, just in case the track's a bit iffy. We've got this weird contact here. What would that be for? That just seems to be, what would that be? What is that needed for? That corresponds to anything here? I don't think so. We've got a bit of a blob chip going on. Crystal up here, could be a faulty crystal. 
curious as to what that is for there. And it looks like you could put the battery straight on here as well for different models, doesn't it? That looks like the same kind of uh, size there. And we've got the two contacts here and here, plus three volts, which these little 30, uh, 20, 32s are. And I always say this in these kind of videos that use these ones. 20 stands for 20 millimeters across, so two centimeters. And 32 stands for 3.2 millimeters in depth, 3.2. So when, for example, you get a 2025, that will be 20 millimeters across and 2.5 millimeters in depth. Right, okay, let's see if we can take this out completely. Yes, we can. Let's strip it apart more. I know I need to check the buttons and stuff. I'm just curious now. There we go. Oh, oh, look at that, that nice pendulum. Right, so that's how it works. So we've got the uh, connection going through there. We know we're definitely gonna have voltage coming from here because the screen is lighting up. So that all looks to be okay. So that's that bit there that spins round. That's so smooth. Oh, I can just feel it wobbling like that. Oh, that's nice. Oh. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe it's not good for it. Okay, well, I think we should... Uh, what should we do to begin with? Should we see if those caps are going to ground and then we'll also check the switches. So just using my meter on continuity. Uh, let's just see whether we have anything on them. No. Maybe that's not a ground. Uh, let's go to the black wire here. No, okay, those caps are not being used for that. Uh, let's do the switches at the front. Okay, that's working. Oh, hold on now. Is this one working all the time? Is it just constantly being reset? Is that the problem? Because this is the zero one, isn't it? Yeah, I think that switch is dodgy. So if we go, let's have a look at the back here, see if we can work out what's going on. It was this side here that was playing up, but it's not. It doesn't want to work. It does. Let's zoom right in. Right, first of all, let's look at the header pins. Well, the soldering doesn't seem to be uh, very good on that. Is that pin lifted there? Yes, it has. That pin's that pin's broken. That pin's lifted. Right, has the pad gone? I think we need to take this off and have a look. Where did I go through to? Well, actually, we don't need to take it off, do we? We can just solder it onto. We can just solder it back onto there. That's loose. That's loose. That's loose. That's not loose. And that's loose there. Right, I think that this has had maybe a drop has caused that. That one's loose as well. And that one's loose. Right, let's solder them down. Again, this might have been caused because of the taking it apart. Or this might be the problem. Just gonna add a little bit of flux and try to reflow each of these. Gonna add a little bit of pressure down as I do it.
All right, they're definitely stuck. Just gonna add a little bit more solder to that one. Right, that's okay. I'm not going to clean it up yet. Let's just see if it starts working now. Let's that's back in. Bingo! Oh, no, no bingo. It worked for a second or two. Hold on, maybe that's the battery. Yes, right. Reset. Hold on, let me do it properly. Reset. Hold on a minute. No, we've got a bit of movement now, but it's not doing what it needs to do. Right, that works. So I've got the wrong camera angle for this. Let's just do it like properly. I know you can't see it, but I'm gonna turn it on now. Right, it definitely came on and it's gone to zero, zero. Now, surely when I move, yes, there we go, it's working. Look. It's just that we have to be vertical, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, there you go, 90, 100 degrees. I'll show you properly at the end. Well, that's it, it's dodgy. It takes a while though to, uh, takes a while to do it. Let's see, is it gonna go back to zero? No, it's not. Hmm. Uh, Zero. Right, so we've zeroed. Now I'm going to move it to here. Right, move it to here, which is going to be what? 90 degrees or something. 122 degrees. 45. Maybe, because we're not back together properly, maybe the, maybe the weight of the pendulum isn't working right. Let's pop the battery out. I mean, we definitely got more life now than we had before. It's just that I'm not sure if the reading is correct. Ooh, yeah. Now these magnets are just placed in here. They're not fixed. That's locked into place. Okay, now, right. I'm just gonna test it myself first while I know I haven't put the screws in. Right, okay, the angle side of it does seem to be responsive, but look, it's not zeroing. So the zero button is not working. So now, is that intermittent or is it something to do with this front bit not making contact with the button even though I can hear it clicking? Yeah, so the, this this button here works. The zero doesn't. Right, let's take it a, apart again and see what's happening with the zero button. Definitely getting there though now, aren't we? So I take it apart again to work out why this zeroing is not working. So on these switches, there's four contacts. And when I was testing them, I was testing them on the diagonals. So the bottom left contact to the top right contact. And when I would press in, it would make the continuity beep on the meter. And if you were to go from the top left to the bottom right, it would also work. If you were to go top left to bottom left, it's a short because they're on the same side. And if you go from the top right to the bottom right, it's also a short. So the thing that threw me, and it's kind of obvious now that I should have just checked this, but it was throwing me at the time, I was testing the switch on the diagonals from bottom left to top right and from the top left to bottom right. Yet on the board, 
Out of the four contacts, only two of them were in use, and they were both the top contacts, the top left and top right. One of them was going to ground, and the other one was going into the blob chip. So when that one that goes into the blob chip is dragged to ground, it zeroes the device. So what I was doing is I was taking the switch off, and of course it was testing OK on diagonals. And then when I was shorting the two contacts, the two tracks on the board, it was zeroing, and I was thinking, what? It's zeroing when I use my tweezers, and yet the switch is working on continuity when I test it off the board. But when I put it back on, it wasn't working. Then it dawned on me. I was testing the switch at diagonals. I should have been testing it across the top two pins. When I tested it across the top two pins, the switch was working, but not all the time. It was just seemed to be working sometimes and not other times. So all I did was clean it with IPA, and clean it with deoxit as well. And then I flip the switch over. So the two bottom contacts that weren't actually in use as far as the board are concerned, of course, every time you press the switch, they're in use. But as far as the board is concerned, they weren't in use. I then put them up the top and then everything started working perfectly. So the chances are, because I cleaned the switch out, the other contacts are probably working fine as well, but I just flipped them over. I really need to buy a whole heap of these switches because they cost next to nothing, and they're in various different devices, so they would be useful to have around, and then you could just swap them over rather than trying to clean them out and stuff. But uh, yeah, that's it. The reason I fast forwarded through this part of the video is it was quite long-winded, went on for about 20 minutes or so, and there was a lot of taking off, testing, putting back on, not working, putting back on, working because the switch was flipped, taken off again. So it's not going to make for very good viewing. So uh, hence the voiceover. So what you see now is when the switch is put back on in the flipped orientation. So the bottom is now the top and now it's all working good. There we go. Right, we know what the problem is then. For some reason, those two contacts off this switch are not working great, but it doesn't make a difference because we've got the, uh, the other side working. He says as it fails to reset. Hold on now. Right. On and off is definitely working. Now let's say if I want to zero it here. Yeah, that zeroes now. Say I'll move it to here and I want to zero it here. That zeroes. Maybe it gets confused if you hit too many things at once. Yeah, that's working. And it does seem to be 90 degrees as well. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's solder it up. Well, I'm confident now that that is all going to be okay, so I'm going to give this a nice clean up with some isopropyl alcohol and uh, close it up fully. And then we can do the final test in the video. I never got to find out what that is for though, did I? This spring thing here, but I'm not going to mess with it. Because maybe it's to do with somehow where the weight goes across here, it changes something. I can't see what that does though, it doesn't seem to do anything. Oh, it wouldn't be for the screws to go through to short this part of the board, would it? Do you know what? Is that what it is? When the screws go through here, they touch this contact and then put the ground through onto this board. Would that be it? Maybe to stop noise? Because, I mean, it's working now without it, isn't it? Right, okay, happy. Let's get it fully back. Well, just putting it back together there, I found it quite awkward to do. And I think it's because these have to line up perfectly with here. But you see, if this is ever so slightly different, then it doesn't want to line up there. So I had to actually undo it from here, start to put these in and ease them down. So maybe these are always under a little bit of strain if they're not perfect. And possibly then when it gets dropped, 
because these are already under strain, it doesn't take much to shatter the solder connections. That's what I'm thinking there because those two screws were not going in. So I've got the little rubber seal at the back there. Now I just need to put this front bit back on and drop the screws. Well, I'm just reheating the glue just a tiny little bit, just at 100 degrees Celsius from a distance, just to try to get it to stick back on again. So it's all back together now and uh, the on button is working and when I press zero, it is zero in. So if I turn it to here now, it's reading like around about 90 degrees and if I hit the zero, it reads zero. So perfect. Well, right, let's do some real life testing. So here we have a possible real life scenario of where you could use one of these. Now, obviously a cheap mitre saw like this, you're not gonna to be too bothered about having it absolutely perfect. All you would have to do is offer up the wood, cut down, and if you're unsure, you could flip the wood over, cut again, and then you would know whether or not you've got 90 degrees. But let's say now if you had a woodworking shop, machine shop, if you needed something of higher accuracy, then this is how you would use one of these. So look, this will not tell us whether something is level like a spirit level because you need to kind of have your base that you're comparing it to. So all you're doing is measuring the difference between two or more angles. So right now we're saying that this floor is going to be our level and this machine on our floor is going to be the level. So we're going to turn it on here and we're going to zero it. So let's zero it now. This is working perfectly, by the way. So you can see now that that is zero. But how do we really know if this one here is 90 degrees? Now, I've actually put it out a little bit on purpose, but normally you would just use this at the back here. But the problem is, how accurate really is that gonna be when you're dealing with plastic and a scale which isn't too precise? So what you would then do is you would get this and you would put it onto the blade here using the magnets. And now if you have a look, you can see that that isn't 90 degrees, is it? It's 92.9, so it's nearly 93. So what we would do is we would start to level it up. Let's see what it's going to read now. Okay, so we're now at 90 degrees, 0.7. I'm not sure if this is actually going to get me any better than that. Okay, 90.7 looks to be the limit. So you would then uh, do up that bolt at the back there. And now you see, you know that that is 90 degrees because this is gonna be a lot more accurate than the scale at the bottom. Now, the interesting thing about this is that when you turn it off and back on again, it remembers where it was before. And look, it is accurate because that's gone back to zero again. So that's pretty impressive. Let's see if it goes at 90.7 again here. Yes, it does. So I suppose that's what you're paying for, isn't it? The level of accuracy. You know what, that is actually amazing. And now if I was to <coughs> turn it off, excuse me, and turn it back on again, let's go to the floor here. And it will take the last measurement. So you can see now that the floor is actually half a degree difference than this, because this is just gonna be on rubber feet and the rubber feet are gonna be slightly worn and slightly out. So it is a useful tool if your job needs one of these. You can see how it is, uh, how it would come in handy. Now, if we zero it here, that will now go to zero. And now when we put it on here, it should be half a degree out, shouldn't it? 
there we go look at that that's amazing that really is very very accurate so a massive thanks to john for sending that in now i know not many people will click on this one but you can see how interesting the inside was to me i don't really know how it works it looks like some kind of potentiometer with that weight always you know always going down so uh but as far as the fix is concerned wasn't that nice it looks like those joins are always going to be slightly under tension because you see you've got machine screws through the top circuit board here and unless those solder joints are perfect these are always they're always going to be under a little bit of tension because the screws are not very forgiving if the holes on the circuit board were slightly bigger then it would allow for more uh, less strain on that little joint that i soldered so maybe this got dropped i don't know or maybe it was just the the maybe it was just constantly under a little bit of pressure there and eventually it's uh, eventually it gave way and the zero button was the extra little thing added in there so it looked like the top contacts were not doing very good but by me swapping it over now it's working perfectly the reason it's jumping so much is because remember it's not level now this is just in my hand and i'm shaking so uh yeah that is it a surprisingly interesting little device so if you enjoyed it give it a massive thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care everyone.